hang with you, this, uh, the disappointment of this defeat? I think you have to. Uh, I think you have to move on. Can't dwell on it. Uh, we learned a lot. Um, had a lot of great things on tape, had a lot of mistakes that we uh, know that we can correct, and that's the best part about it is they're, they're all correctable. And so we're just looking forward to moving forward and have all our focus on Central Florida. Yeah, I think you just put it in the back of your mind, but you always have it there when you go through practice every single day leading up to this next game. Does this, uh, Blake, this is for you, does this defense, uh, you're reshuffled, you got a lot of new people. Um, how would you characterize this, the overall speed of this, this defense? Is it as speed, uh, quick as it was last year? Yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot of new guys, but I think just through fall camp, I saw that we could be just as good as last year, if not better. And looking at the film yesterday, you saw guys flying around, being able to make plays. It wasn't the speed that wasn't hurting that was hurting us. It was more just not really realizing where your help is and that certain little fundamental stuff to be able to make your job that much easier. How much will it hurt losing Harrison Phillips? It's gonna hurt a lot. He the fifteen plays he was in was was huge. He was a great run stopper, a great pass defense guy. He had a couple breakups, he had a great pressure on the quarterback and just his kind of personality out there, his hard working go get it attitude was huge for our D-line, just kind of motivating them after a hard individual just to put that much more effort into certain team periods. Kevin, after looking at the film, you had a lot of drop passes, a lot of opportunities. You guys left, I think, a lot of points out of there. But always tough the first game of the year. Do you see where you can make a lot of improvement on offense or no? Uh, so there's so much room for improvement. Um, I mean, I, I think that everyone can tell you that you know, we could have done so many things differently, so many things better. Uh, and it, it's good because that's the mindset we need. People need to um, recognize the need for improvement and, and growth. And uh, it, it was a good lesson uh, week one. I'd rather have that early on. Uh, but it really just, you know, we've got to have that sense of urgency now that uh, we got to make sure our, our week of practice is that much better and, and then we're, we're that much more prepared heading into the week. And I know you're hard on yourself. Uh, after looking at the tape, what do you think of your performance? Um, I, I mean, you know, it, you're never as good as you think you are, and you're never as bad as you think you are. Uh, but uh, I definitely would like to have some plays back. Um, a lot of people, I, I think, feel that way. But I definitely know that I could have uh, done things differently, done things better uh, that I'm capable of. And so just going to work on the things that I can fix and, and control and, and um, you know, try and keep getting better that way. Kevin, uh, you didn't have a uh, director in the first half. You didn't have to choose except for a player two in the first half, and then they both played the second. And then things started to pick up when you, on those last two drives. But I was wondering if you felt at all hamstrung uh, in the first half by the fact that your top two receivers were not in there. Um, honestly, I, I thought that Francis and, and – uh, and Rollins did a great job. Uh, Rollins had some some big catches in the first half, and uh, I I think that we were fairly efficient in the passing game in the first half. Um, but you know we need to turn some of those in, into bigger plays. And and uh, it, I mean obviously with great players like Rector and Kajus, you'd like to have them out there at times because they can change a game. Um, but I was. Very comfortable out there with Francis and Rollins, and thought they played really well, both pass game and run game. Um, but it definitely hurts having two uh, key players not out there. Blake, Kevin used the, the term sense of urgency. Maybe you can speak to how that's affecting the guys this week in terms of making sure you're totally buttoned up for Saturday. For all yeah, we kind of hit that on Monday just as a whole team collectively how important this week is just everyone talks about the big jump every team makes from first to second week and we want to make the biggest jump there ever could be and we bring it out to practice yesterday just from the sense of guys this is do or die or not do or die I guess but I'd say this is where it all comes down to this is how it's going to define our season right here this week because it's going to show who really cares that much for us this season? Who really cares about that overall goal of that Pac-12 championship? 
Blake, what can you tell us about uh, Central Florida's offense? Uh, they're a great offense. Another one of those um, great quarterbacks. He's a uh, dual threat, throwing, running, and it's going to be a great challenge this week just overall of, once again, who's going to have all that fundamental work down and be able to make those crucial plays and be in that crucial spot at that those right times. Tell me, how about their defense? What, how would you describe that? Um, they make plays. Uh, they don't don't exactly, um, you know. Some some teams kind of have their trends where they're where they'll blitz a few times in a row, or, or you know, uh, they kind of have their patterns of what they'll call. And and this team's different. They'll have a streak of blitz, blitz in you going after you, and then they'll play coverage, play off, and uh, so it, it'll be interesting to see how they play us, but they, they've got a lot of athletes and, and guys who can make plays back there. Um, I know they have some newer guys uh, in the secondary, but um, for the most part, they look pretty talented, and, and uh, their scheme allows them to fly around and make plays. Kevin, there was a, you had to burn a timeout in the first half because you weren't lined up properly. That was the first offensive play of the Second half, I guess it was. Uh, there were a couple of other, a uh, couple of penalties for too many men in the huddle. Is it just, is it just first game goof, goof ups, or is there something more to it? I, I think that we just, uh, you know, you, you take for granted kind of in, in practice the communication aspect of that it's going to be loud in the game and you need to make sure you're communicating in and out of the huddle about personnel changes and who's in the game and who's not. And I, I think that that's something that we kind of let slip, uh, and uh, it's it's unacceptable. Uh, it's something that we, um, you know, have to be more aware of, and uh, can't can't lose yards that way. It definitely hurts us, uh, puts us in the hole offensively. So we just got to be smarter mentally and, and make sure we're communicating. Kevin, I talked to David about in this era of wide open offenses how conservative he is sometimes. Uh, like on that last drive, you were seven for seven when you kind of opened it up. Would you like to see maybe the offense open up a little bit more and use a little more of your skill set or not? I mean, I'll do whatever's asked of me. Um, I like I like getting into a rhythm. I think anyone would tell you that. And uh, I know the running backs feel the same way. I feel that way. The receivers do if they can get a couple balls, a couple of plays in a row. Um, so anything that gets our offense into a rhythm and moving down the field, I'm okay with. Uh, it was nice to see us finally getting something going, but it was a little too late. What would you guys say to Stanford fans who are panicking already at this point? There are a few of them out there, probably a lot of them out there. What would you say to them? Is this for me? Um, <laughs> I, was, I, I don't know. I mean, we kind of worry about ourselves inside Stanford football as a team. Um, I guess Stanford fans, I'll just say, wait until Saturday. Yeah, too much for you. Coach said they gave you a little tour of the new locker room facility, or you guys have a uh, quick peek at it. Uh, what, what is it like? Uh, how, how would you describe it? I think it's uh, I think it's awesome. Um, I think it'll be a great locker room for, for game days, and uh, I mean, I'm sure you guys will see it once we get in there on Saturday, but uh, it's nice. It's big and open. They did a great job with it. I mean, we, we only saw a small portion of it, but yeah, it was I'm, sure it'll, still. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'll be, you know, unbelievable once, once we get in there. This might be the most important home opener since you guys have been here with that first loss, right? Yeah, uh, it's tough coming off a loss, but we try, we're going to try and win every game at home. Uh, every game the rest of the way, but this is just the next game on our schedule. Hey, Kevin, I'm, I know you talked about the last few games last year, you talked about how <clears> there was <throat> a much better rhythm than you felt that. How much of that was, do you think, directly related to being in the no huddle? Is that a key component, you think, to, to the rhythm thing for you guys? Uh, I think it's, it definitely is another aspect of our, our game that helps us, and we kind of get out there with a, with a group, and we can get into a rhythm and um, it definitely helps because we have you know, certain plays that we feel very comfortable getting first downs with and I, I think that that's something that we're going to be practicing this week and I think that we'll have it on Saturday.
Thanks, guys.